Hello there, my friends. Welcome to another captivating tale of triumph over adversity and the enduring power of kindness. Enjoy the story. Gus Bolden was born and raised in the tiny, forgotten farming village of Podunkville, population 500 on a good day. The only time he'd ever laid eyes on the big city was during a fifth-grade field trip to the Natural History Museum downtown, a rare treat for the rural kids. But that brief taste of the bright lights and bustling streets left an indelible mark on young Gus. From that day on, he knew his future lay far beyond the drab, stagnant confines of Podunkville. The monotonous small-town life just didn't suit Gus's ambitious spirit. There were zero opportunities for advancement in that rural backwater, and even earning a decent living was a constant struggle. Like the rest of the villagers, Gus's parents, Dad Nicky, a hard-working but weathered tractor driver, and Mom Irene, the local veterinarian, had to commute an hour each way just to get to their low-paying jobs. Gus would watch his neighbors shuffle off on their daily bus or bicycle pilgrimages and think, there has to be more to life than this. The idea of escaping to the big city became an all-consuming obsession for Gus. He was a decent enough student, but he knew his mediocre grades would never earn him a spot at a prestigious university. Not that it mattered. Higher education was a pipe dream that Gus had long since abandoned. He was a classic underachiever, often too lazy or disinterested to put in the effort on his homework. But the knowledge that a diploma wasn't necessary to find work in the city kept him going. After graduating high school, Gus's few close friends all scattered. Some went off to college, others enlisted in the military. The unlucky ones who stayed behind ended up taking soul-crushing jobs on the local communal farm. For the young men of Podunkville, that was pretty much the only option. Gus, on the other hand, was deemed unfit for military service due to some minor bone issues. But rather than feeling defeated, he was invigorated by the prospect of finally breaking free of his rural roots and starting a new life in the big city. His parents, lifelong Podunkville residents, were bewildered by Gus's burning desire to leave. They tried desperately to convince him to follow in his mother's footsteps and become a vet like her, assuring him he could have a comfortable life in their little village. But Gus had made up his mind years ago. If he stayed in that dead-end town, he'd be dooming himself to a life of unfulfilled potential. After much pleading and arguing, Gus's parents eventually had to accept his decision. They gave him some money to get settled and sent him off with a stern warning from his father. Don't you dare embarrass this family out there, you hear? Gus promised he'd do them proud, brimming with hope and determination as he set out to conquer the big city. Upon arrival, Gus quickly found work at a large leather goods factory. It was backbreaking labor, but the pay was decent enough for an entry-level position with no education or experience. Gus didn't mind the grueling shifts. He was just grateful to be away from the stifling confines of Podunkville. After long days on the factory floor, the exhausted Gus would often doze off during the bus ride home, only to be jolted awake by a concerned co-worker, making sure he didn't miss his stop. One evening, Gus worked a surprise overtime shift, so he found himself on that familiar bus route alone. That's when a young woman named Sonny, who recognized Gus from the bus, gently shook him to rouse him before his destination. Sonny was an orphaned seamstress who lived a few blocks past Gus's usual stop. As they chatted on the way to her apartment, Gus felt an instant connection with the kind-hearted girl. He was reluctant for the ride to end wishing he could stay on that bus with her all night. Gus and Sonny's wedding was a joyous, raucous affair, filled with laughter, music, and the kind of unbridled happiness that can only come from finding your true soulmate. Gus's parents, Nikki and Irene, were positively beaming with pride as they watched their country boy son marry such a lovely, kind-hearted girl. They couldn't have asked for a better daughter-in-law. The newlyweds were blissfully in love, and it showed. They were the picture of marital bliss, never arguing or bickering like so many couples. Gus was head over heels for his beautiful Sonny, and she adored him just as much. Their pure, wholesome romance was the envy of all their friends. Just a year and a half after the wedding, Gus and Sonny welcomed a precious baby girl named Mariana into the world. The little girl was the spitting image of her mother, 
raven hair, sparkling green eyes, and a smile that could light up a room. Gus and Sonny were utterly smitten, doting on their daughter and showering her with love. For Gus, Mariana was the missing piece that finally made his new city life complete. But their happiness was short-lived. Sonny began experiencing debilitating stomach issues, but she stubbornly refused to see a doctor, insisting it was just a simple case of gastritis that she could treat herself with over-the-counter remedies. Gus pleaded with her to get proper medical attention, but his wife was adamant. One morning, Sonny collapsed in the kitchen while preparing breakfast. Gus rushed her to the hospital, but by the time they arrived, Sonny had slipped into a coma. The doctors delivered the devastating news. There was nothing they could do. Sonny had succumbed to a ruptured ulcer. Gus was devastated, his world crashing down around him. But he knew he had to stay strong, for the sake of little Mariana, now motherless. Gus threw himself into his work at the factory, using the long, grueling hours as a distraction from his crippling grief. Most men in his shoes would have turned to the bottle, but Gus couldn't stomach the taste of alcohol. Instead, he channeled all of his pain and anguish into being the best provider he could be for his daughter. The years passed, and Gus remained a devoted, hard-working single father. He rose through the ranks at the factory, becoming one of the top employees through sheer determination and an unparalleled work ethic. Mariana grew into a beautiful young woman, the light of Gus's life. Though their household was missing Sonny's warmth and laughter, Gus did his absolute best to give Mariana all the love and support she needed. One day, as Gus was riding the bus to his shift, a scrawny, pale-faced ten-year-old boy approached him. Mister, can you please give me fifty cents? I'm so ashamed to ask, but I'm really hungry. There's no food at home. My parents just drink it all away. Gus's heart broke for the desperate child. Without hesitation, he emptied his pockets, handing the boy every last cent he had. He even dug out a leftover roll from his lunch to give the hungry kid. Thank you. I'll pay you back. I promise, the boy said through tears. Little did Gus know that chance encounter would have a profound impact on the rest of his life. The boy named Artie grew up to become a successful businessman. And all those years later, he made it his mission to track down the kind stranger who had helped him in his time of need. As the years went on, Gus continued to thrive at work and pour all of his energy into raising Mariana to be a kind, capable young woman. But their idyllic life was shattered once again when during a bike race with her friends, Mariana suffered a devastating spinal injury that left her paralyzed from the waist down. Gus was devastated, watching his beloved daughter Mariana struggle to adapt to life in a wheelchair after her devastating spinal injury. The medical bills for her treatment were astronomical, but Gus was determined to get her the best care possible, even if it meant draining his savings. Just as all hope seemed lost, there was a sudden, insistent knocking at Gus's front door one afternoon. Wiping the exhaustion from his eyes, Gus trudged over and peered through the peephole, wondering who on earth could be calling. To his utter bewilderment, he found himself face to face with a well-dressed, handsome man in his early thirties, a complete stranger. Can I help you? Gus asked cautiously as he cracked open the door. The man offered Gus a warm, almost sheepish smile. I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but do you remember me? He asked tentatively. Gus studied the stranger's features, racking his brain to try to place this unfamiliar face. Something about the man's kind, earnest expression seemed vaguely familiar, but Gus just couldn't quite put his finger on it. I'm afraid I don't, Gus admitted, shaking his head apologetically. The man let out a soft chuckle. It's been a long time, but I'll never forget the day you helped me, a scrawny little kid, asking you for money on the bus. Remember now? Suddenly, it clicked. Gus's eyes went wide as the realization washed over him. Artie, he breathed, scarcely daring to believe it. The man, Artie, nodded, his smile growing even warmer. That's right. I, I've thought about that day so many times over the years. The way you just reached into your pocket without a moment's hesitation and gave me every last cent you had. It meant the world to me. Gus was utterly floored, his mind racing. This well-dressed, successful-looking businessman standing on his doorstep was the same scrawny, desperate kid he had helped all those years ago. It was almost too incredible to comprehend. 
Before Gus could even begin to process it, Artie reached into the inner pocket of his suit jacket and pulled out a thick wad of cash, far more than the measly few dollars Gus had handed him back then. I've been wanting to track you down and repay you for so long, Artie said, his voice thick with emotion as he pressed the money into Gus's trembling hands. Please, take this. It's the least I can do after what you did for me. Gus stared down at the stack of bills, his vision blurring with tears of sheer disbelief and gratitude. This was more than enough to cover Mariana's expensive surgery and rehabilitation. In that moment, all the worry, the stress, the crushing sense of helplessness he had been feeling just melted away. He looked up at Artie, utterly overwhelmed. I don't know what to say, Gus rasped, his voice cracking. I, I can't believe this is happening. Artie reached out and gave Gus's shoulder a gentle, reassuring squeeze. You don't have to say anything, he said softly. Just let me do this for you. After all you've done, it's the least I can do. Gus nodded mutely, too choked up to speak. As he ushered Artie inside, a profound sense of wonder and gratitude washed over him. The scrawny, desperate kid he had helped on a whim all those years ago had grown into this remarkable, compassionate man. With Artie's financial support, Mariana was able to undergo a complex spinal operation and slowly work her way back to regaining her ability to walk, against all odds. Artie became a constant presence in their lives, helping Mariana with her physical therapy and making sure she had everything she needed for a full recovery. As Mariana grew stronger, Gus began to notice a change in the way Artie looked at his daughter. The businessman seemed to have developed genuine feelings for the beautiful, resilient young woman. And to Gus's delight, it appeared Mariana was falling for Artie as well. The pair grew closer with each passing day, their bond deepening. Eventually, Artie mustered the courage to ask for Mariana's hand in marriage. To Gus's absolute joy, his daughter joyfully accepted. The wedding was a lively, boisterous affair, filled with music, laughter, and the kind of unbridled happiness that comes from two souls finding their perfect match. As Gus watched his daughter and her new husband exchange vows, he couldn't help but feel a swell of pride and gratitude. Who would have thought that one small act of kindness he'd shown a desperate child all those years ago would blossom into such a beautiful, life-changing event? Gus had come so far from his humble small-town roots, and now his family was whole again. As the newlyweds danced the night away, Gus couldn't resist dropping a few hints to Mariana and Artie about when they might be ready to start a family of their own. After all, Gus was more than ready to become a grandfather and shower his beloved daughter's children with the same boundless love he had given her.